Throughout American history, leaders of industry have built some incredible mansions, such as this one, which was only lived in for a few weeks out of each year. Hi everyone, Ken here. Hit that like button to let YouTube know you enjoy historic homes, and let's begin exploring this house. During America's Gilded Age, the demand for leather products was skyrocketing. Whether it would be used for fashion, furniture, or as wall treatments, a limited supply kept prices high. In 1893, Thomas Proctor founded the United States Leather Company and created the Leather Trust. Within three years, it became one of the first companies to be listed on the Dow Jones, capitalized at $130 million, the modern equivalent of about $4.8 billion. During this time, the company reorganized its leadership, placing Thomas's son, James H. Proctor, as its vice president. James was able to amass a fortune in this role, building houses in Manhattan and in Newport, Rhode Island. But perhaps the most impressive of his estates was Masley Hall in Ipswich, Massachusetts. James hired architect Ernest Machado, who had become well-known for designing grand buildings throughout the U.S. and Canada, giving him carte blanche to create an equestrian estate, the likes of which would attract royal guests. As we venture onto the property, we see one wing of the mansion teasing us from atop the ridge. We still have a long way to go before we reach the house, winding down dirt roads, crossing streams, and passing by expansive lawns. Along the way, we find the stables fashioned in the Tudor Revival style. When completed, the stables were some of the most modern in the world, with electric lights, running water, and a built-in drainage system for optimizing hygiene. Throughout the stables, you could find James's many show horses trotting about fresh hay changed out multiple times per day. Now that we've seen how luxurious the stables are, I know we are anxious to visit the mansion. Let's continue our trek up the hill, following the pasture's fence line, beyond which cattle graze. Masley Hall is starting to come into view again, its bright red, brick facade standing in stark contrast to the rolling green lawn. As we continue following the drive, we see a rather humble stone outbuilding and hear a loud hum. This is the generator building, producing electricity to power the entire estate. And if you've been wondering how many people it required to run the day-to-day -day operations here, you aren't alone. The rambling servants' quarters were added onto many times to ensure enough hands were available to keep the estate running without a hitch. Finally, we've made a near-complete circle around the mansion and can continue to the court. Once we dismount our carriage, the chauffeurs will store it in the carriage house. Standing outside the mansion, we start to appreciate its grand scale with larger-than-life proportions. All about the facade, brick is broken up by carved limestone architectural elements. From chimneys boasting elaborate terracotta blocks and limestone coins containing each corner, to wings supported by pointed arches and a four-story tower capped by a copper dome, we won't want to waste any more time outside as we are ready to swing open the solid wood doors and explore the interior. Entering the mansion, we arrive in the stair hall, boasting a bifurcated staircase rising below a wall of diamond-paned windows. The half-timbered interior soars three stories towards the vaulted ceiling, with rich wood balustrades skirting the landing. To one side, a fireplace with intricate relief is tucked away below an antique European tapestry. We'll revisit this space when we head upstairs, but for now, let's continue exploring the first floor. Beyond the stair hall, we find the dining room clad in wood paneling and topped by a coffered ceiling. Though the ample natural light nearly silhouettes the fireplace, we can make out fluted pilasters framing the mantel with floral motifs delicately carved into it. Going behind the scenes, the state-of-the-art kitchen with glazed brick walls would have been the envy of any private chef. Next, we will travel into the living hall with painted millwork trimming the room. This space serves not only as the living room, but the music room and billiard room combined, making the living hall an especially livable space where James could entertain his friends. In fact, it wasn't rare for him to entertain several hundred guests in the house with some of his gatherings being reported in newspapers. Of course, Masley Hall was not without its formal spaces such as the sitting room with ornate plaster ceilings and classically styled finishes. But for the most part, this estate was meant to be for the family's enjoyment. Even the children, while too young to ride, could play with toy horses in the playroom. Let's swing back around to the stair hall and head up to the second floor. Up here we'll find many bedrooms with several of them boasting fireplaces and en-suites. Though the true point of Masley Hall wasn't to be inside, but to enjoy the great outdoors by riding horses about the property. The Proctor family held on to the estate until James's passing when Masley Hall was sold to the Catholic Church. The estate was then utilized as a retreat center and a school until 1999 with very few changes being made to the main house. Since that time, Masley Hall has served as the home of New England Biolabs and has been meticulously maintained. Which part of this estate was your favorite? Let me know down below in the comment section. And while you're there, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an exciting episode of This House.